Free to play is now better than pay to win, and even included with the free to play can be some low spenders. So why do we feel that way? Well, we've had a lot of really strong two star gems added to the game, and these are more accessible for free to play or low spenders. Let's take a look at a couple of them. And this also some one stars that are worth noting as well, and we'll do that after the two stars. So we have things like Bloody Reach, which is really, really good for ranged characters. It adds 2% damage at rank one for every two yards up to a maximum of 8%. Very, very strong for ranged characters. Cutthroat's Grin adds 8% critical ch chance at rank one. When attacking from behind in PvE, this is much easier to do. Really powerful in, say, dungeons or raid settings where you know you're going to be able to get behind the boss a lot of times. Also have gems such as Cure Sling and Abiding Curse, which are strong in PvP situations. Recently, we've had Pain Clasp added. This does 8% additional damage to enemies suffering from a continuous damage effect. And we're also going to be getting Mother's Lament, which is going to be a very strong DPS addition as well. A lot of players have lower resonance say two to 3,000 than some of the high resonance players, say six to 7K, and they actually outperform them in situations like the Gauntlet or even the Warband Raids. And this is because they're utilizing some two-star gems that have really strong effects rather than just maxing the resonance with some gems like say Phoenix Ashes, which provides no additional damage other than the resonance value itself, or even some other weaker five-star gems that are in the game Blessing the Worthy, if you're not being attacked, is not going to add any additional damage other than the Resonance again. And there's some weak ones just in general, like say his Wensons, which aren't ideal. And in a situation where it's a single target, you're actually not going to be able to make use of the proc. So by utilizing some smart two stars or even some of these one stars that are powerful, like say Berserker's Eye, sorry, or an Everlasting Torment, these can really add some decent damage. Everlasting Torment, as I showed in a recent video, pairs really well. If you're in a group with Crusader, you can just ensure that your banquet set will proc, and this can be very good for burst situations, whether it's PvE or PvP. So there's some more unique setups and strategic combinations that you can make use in these different gems. The five-star gems, as players catch up more and more in resonance and the gap closes, say you have fully awakened two-star gems, this is a lot more comparable to somebody that welled out early and had full five-star gems. And as that gap closes, we'll probably see more and more combinations and effective combos come up. How does this all factor into, say, PvP? Well, some recent research shows that the PvP matchmaking is largely dictated by player PvP CR, which is essentially your life and damage added together. So if you add those stats together, there's still a lot of things that aren't very balanced. In fact, you could have different secondary stats, player skills a factor, player class is a factor. So if you're somebody that's pumping resonance, what are you actually really paying to win? In fact, it doesn't ensure that you win anything. In terms of PvE, winning the ultimate goal here would be becoming an immortal, and there's a lot of players that don't even want to do that, myself included. In fact, I would much rather remain shadow, so there's really no incentive for me to, to add resonance in any regard or add strength to my character in order to kind of become an immortal or an, even really to participate in that stuff. The rewards for some of these events just aren't worth it. And the time and rewards for an immortal certainly are not worth it, in my opinion. Only thing that really makes the immortal a pleasurable experience is, say, going in for your first time and getting to experience it. And after that, it's kind of a one and done thing. Now, going back to some of the pay to win features, and this includes secondary stats. Even if you pump your resonance to, say, 7,000, well, given the matchmaking system, there's probably going to be a 7,000 resonance player or really close on the other team. And since it doesn't balance by secondary stats, if you don't have secondary stats here, that match up well against the player on the other team, it's probably not gonna matter. So you really still haven't paid to win anything. You have to essentially pay for the resonance, then pay for the secondary stats, then pay for favorable matchmaking, which you can't, and hope for a bunch of other factors. And since the matches right now seem to really be decided by one or two players per team, with the remaining 12 or 14 players being mostly insignificant to the outcome of the match, this really isn't a good feeling for anybody that's participating, and honestly isn't much of an incentive to spend on the game in my opinion. What we have in the lower brackets and also will be coming is we're actually going to have some separation for free to play if they choose not to advance into infernal one and there are, anyone can choose this option meaning you can actually create yourself a situation where you'll be on a separate leaderboard one of the things that will occur when players enter infernal one is they'll now be placed on different leaderboards and that's going to create different brackets in which people can no longer face each other in the battlegrounds so again this is kind of an advantage for free to play because they'll be able to stay within the same grouping of similar skilled, similar 
attributes, similar resonance, and so forth. However, if you're paid a win, well, once you move into the Inferno bracket, there's no limit, meaning that if you enter into the Inferno bracket because you've gotten to 3,000 resonance and get there, well, anybody that's got 7,000 resonance is also going to be there. So without further additional brackets, this really isn't an advantage for some of these lower resonance players. In fact, they'll now become the smallest fish in the pond. And this is going to be really important because if you're getting into the game or perhaps you've started investing in the game and thinking about investing more, well, this is going to be a factor, right? Why spend money if you don't have to? Because you're actually able to do a lot of damage with a lower amount of resonance than a lot of players thought. You don't have to pump that resonance number in order to do more damage. So just using some of the smarter two-star gems, potentially getting them to rank 10 and awakening them is actually a really big advantage. So while we're here, what I did outside the tower, and I've shown some methods of this before. Previously, I showed some collecting lower amounts, and this has been something that's been brought to my attention as well. So I jumped over this in order not to collect any of these shards. I killed 50 mobs, and then I got a kill streak of 50 as well. And when I turn this in, I sh should still acquire the gems. Now I can go back, pick these up, and have enough to turn in for another set of 50, thus doubling what I get for these contribution points. So essentially, people feel this is quicker. I don't know if it's quicker to go out and get the 50 kills plus kill streak. It may depend on what you have when you kind of exit and go out and see what's more favorable, but this is also an option to farm really quick. So now that I've talked that through, we'll go ahead and do one more loop on that. So I'm gonna go out, I'm gonna click a tower to activate it so that I can start damaging mobs. Basically just gonna rack my kill streak up, look for some blue packs. And again, I'm trying to get 50 curse shards and a kill streak of 50. Shouldn't be too difficult. Just need some more mobs, really. Kill off whatever I can. That'll refresh my kill streak. And so obviously this is a good example of where it probably was not more efficient, just because there were some gaps in where there were monsters available. But at this point, I have over 50 shards, a kill streak of over 50. These will drop down. I'll leap forward. Clear the bazaar. Brazer, excuse me. We'll have those contribution points. We can then pick these up. That'll give me over 50 shards. And we can turn it in a second time. So depending on what you see as you exit, make that choice and this will help you kind of farm those chests again these chests are very important i'll do one more run here and that'll show you what some rewards we have available we have available i'm just shy of getting the points and these reset on monday so make sure that you get these done before the end of the week especially if you just acquired your second tower since the season reset and actually i shouldn't need full points to unlock that so just for time i'll grab what i need here and reset it a couple more kills should do it here we are so i'll go back and hit this point grab these turn them in just for the sake of showing it and we can see that these rewards are in fact very powerful very strong so it's worthwhile if you have a tower or possibly even two definitely recommend getting these each time here we can claim a reward and we're actually going to receive a legendary item some dust and a few of the cryptic crystals as well so hope this stuff is helpful and before somebody says oh i'm not a demon hunter i can't take advantage of this again just get 50 shards 70 kills and when you return to the brazier just move immediately out of the way and you'll see that the shards drop and you'll be able to do your turn in you don't actually need a mobility skill to do this. Most people should have a mobility skill on in general, but by no means is this trick exempt for everybody other than demon hunters. This is available for everybody. Just move out of the way as fast as you can. You'll see I'm still able to get 60 shards after that. We'll purify that, and we're able to double dip. That's it. So let me know if you think that free-to-play is now a more appealing option than pay to win, or even a moderate spender, perhaps. Enjoy the new legendary gems that have come out if you plan on using them. Let me know if you do leave any additional comments that you may have. If you're discussing anything about builds and so forth, happy to answer any questions. Thanks for taking the time to watch and have a great day.